where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has hidden unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. I'm a planner. I like to plan ahead, be prepared for any eventuality, know how I'm going to get from point A to point B and all the stops I need to make in between. I'm not much for the spur of the moment type of things. No one would accuse me of being impulsive. I had high school classes planned out when my daughter was homeschooling in kindergarten. Not that any of that completely worked out, but I had a plan. Abram may have had a plan too, but the Lord had a different one. In Genesis 12, 1 through 3, the Lord came to Abram and said, Go from your country and from your kindred and your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and from him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Of course, uprooting like that and moving to an unknown place would be most people's greatest fear. Having done that several times in my life, I can totally empathize. God told Abram to leave everything he knew, and go. That was God's command. But with that one command came seven promises. Here's what they were. God said, I will show you where to go. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And all people will be blessed through you. Abram obeyed. Surely he had his own plans, but he put them aside. Surely he had his own fears, but he acted in faith, perhaps even eager to go on an adventure with God. Some years later, though he had obeyed, he hadn't seen God come through on the main promise he'd given him. The only blessing Abram wanted, the only way to make most of God's promises come true, was to have a son. That would be the first step in many of those promises. But Abram remained childless. He was entering his twilight years without an heir. If he died childless, God's promises couldn't come true. It would be as if he'd never lived. To him, it was almost too late. The Lord knew Abram's fears. That's why God appeared to him in chapter 15 by saying, Don't be afraid, Abram. Abram wasn't just afraid of dying without a son. That would be bad enough. He'd been suffering from the stigma of being childless for decades. His fear went deeper than that. He'd begun to question everything. What if God's promises don't come true? What if all I've sacrificed was worthless? Can I really trust God to do this? It surely doesn't look like it. Where were these questions coming from? the same place that our doubts and fears come from, our adversary, the devil. As the Bible says, he's seeking to devour us with insecurity, uncertainty, distrust, unbelief, and anxiety. Of course, Abram didn't have God's written word to reread his promises and receive encouragement that he needed. So God gave him a vision and spoke to him in love, reassuring him that not only would all the promises come true, but the result would be beyond his wildest dreams. As Ephesians 3.20 says, The Lord is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. Abram believed God was that powerful, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Knowing who God is, what he is capable of, is essential to trusting him to keep his promises. What attribute of God helps you cling to the promises he's given you? As always, we'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to share a treasure, support this ministry, or get Carla to speak at an event, please contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. You can listen to other episodes on our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.